Six Flags Discovery Kingdom is one of the most unique parks in the entire Six Flags chain. The park not only features the usual collection of roller coasters and thrill rides that the chain is known for, but it also features a full-fledged zoo. The latter is a large component of any visit to Discovery Kingdom, but this video will ignore that. Check out my review if you want to hear more about all that. This video instead will be a countdown of the park's top 10 rides and attractions. Before starting the countdown, I want to note a few rides that will and will not be included on this list. Whitewater Safari will not be included. While this Intamin River Rapids ride appears to be the park's best water ride, I've never ridden it. This ride has either been closed or had an obnoxiously long queue line in all my visits, and that really is a shame because I believe it would have made this list had I been able to experience it. Not all the park's coasters will be on this list. Kong, which is the Vacoma SLC, is horrifically bad, as was the former Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster. I also have not ridden their new for 2022 attraction in Sidewinder Safari. However, I have ridden an exact clone of this attraction elsewhere, so I will note where I believe it would have placed based on similar rides I've experienced. Lastly, I will be including some defunct attractions here. Number 10, Boomerang Coast to Coaster. This Facoma Boomerang is one of the newer ones, and it tracks decently well. You get some headbanging in the Cobra Roll, but it's not too bad if you're tall enough to clear the top of the over-the-shoulder restraint like me. This is a familiar layout, but it has its strengths. The first drop is a mild freefall sensation, and the three inversions are extremely forceful, especially because you experience them both forwards and backwards. Up next is where I believe Sidewinder Safari would place. This newly opened Zamperla spinning coaster should offer two zippy drops and great spinning in the second half. Now how quickly this one spins impacts whether it can move up an extra spot or two in this list. Number 9, Hammerhead Shark. This Zamperla Hawk is a fun swinging inverter ship. Not only does it look really cool with the ride shark design, but this attraction offers some nice hang time over the top. It's not the fastest or heaviest on the positive forces, but this is a great option if you like hang time like me. Number 8, Thrilla Gorilla. This Amperla Himalaya has a comical name, and it looks unassuming. But this little flat ride rotates at a surprisingly high clip, so it offers some strong and sustained lateral start to finish. It has more power than far larger attractions. Plus, who doesn't love the giant gorilla head in the center? Number 7, Sky Screamer. This is one of the smaller Funtime Star Flyers out there at just 15 stories tall, but it still offers a nice view. It's neat how it was placed in the center of Medusa, but you also can get a bird's eye view of the rest of the park as well from the top. The rise mostly about those visuals, but the spinning has some mild force to it. Number 6, Flash Vertical Velocity. This is the weirdest Intamin Impulse coaster. The launches feel pretty comparable to the others, and I particularly love the pull in the backwards ones. But the front tower is set up far differently than the other rides. Due to the town's height ordinance, the front tower is placed at a 45 degree angle, so the twist is transformed into an inversion loaded with hang time. I love this inversion. The backwards spike is a straight vertical one that offers the usual weightlessness. This ride is extremely prone to downtime, so make sure you ride it if you see it open because it is a unique inverted coaster, which I cover in its own review. Up next would have been Pandemonium. I never rode this Gerslauer spinning coaster while I was at Discovery Kingdom, but I did experience it as Joker in its new home at Six Flags Mexico. This is a different layout than the other Pandemonium coasters in the Six Flags chain. The first half is the usual helixes and hairpin turns, but I love the finale with the bunny hill and forceful final turn, especially because you're usually spinning like a top at this point. Number 5, Batman the Ride. I only rode this SNS free spin once. It had the usual smoothness, but I didn't get too many flips in this one. The better ones in the Six Flags chain offer 4 to 6 flips, but this one only gave me 2. Still, those flips were chaotic, and I also like the theming in this ride's queue line because I am a comic book nerd. Up next would have been Roar. This Great Coasters International Woody was converted into a steel hybrid a while back, which I think was the right decision, but Roar still was a solid ride even in its final days. The ride was quite comfortable up front. It had a persistent shake towards the back, but the cushiony Millennium Flyer trains absorbed most of the blows. Roar had an identical layout to the one at Six Flags America, 
but this one carried more speed through the layout because of the different rolling stock. The twister layout was hard to predict, and there were several pops of airtime into the turnarounds and bunny hills. Number 4, Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth. This Amperla Giant Discovery is the park's best flat ride by far. This supersized frisbee runs a long cycle with plenty of floater airtime in those max swings. Then you can feel this ride's power and speed in the down swings. Number 3, Superman Ultimate Flight. The prototype Premier Ride Skyrocket 2 model is a short ride, but it packs in a lot of thrills. The launch sequence is more exciting on this one because you zoom through the tight station, which accentuates the speed while providing fun near misses. Then the main ascent and descents offer powerful ejector airtime. Then you also get some delightful hang time on the super slow barrel roll high above the ground. This ride is a dynamic experience, especially because this one features just lap bars and no comfort collars. Number 2, Medusa. This is one of the best floorless coasters from Bolger and Mabillard. After nearly two decades of operation, it's still smooth and the layout is fantastic. You have a large straight first drop with some airtime, followed by seven fun inversions. The first few inversions have some nice float, particularly the zero G roll. The two corkscrews at the end have some great snap, and the final few turns pile on the positive G's for variety. Check out my review of this ride if you want to hear more, but I really like Medusa. And coming in at number one by far is Joker. This often gets flack as one of the worst coasters from Rocky Mountain Construction, but I think it's an excellent coaster if you're in the back row. Joker is one of the best first drops out there. You get the usual ejector airtime of the other RMC first drops, combined with some wicked laterals because it twists halfway down. The ride also has several other bunny hills with some aggressive airtime. Then you also have three inversions with tons of hang time. Most notably the Zero-G stall, which was one of my favorite inversions anywhere. This inversion offers sustained inverted airtime, with awesome head choppers. Despite all these aggressive elements, the ride is still super smooth as well thanks to RMC's track work. I have a separate review in this coaster, but it's the main reason I look forward to revisiting this park in the future. So those are the top 10 rides and attractions at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Again, this park also has a lot of animal exhibits, and those shouldn't be missed, but this video lets you know which rides should be prioritized. What are your thoughts on this park's coasters and non-coasters? What are your favorites in the park? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.